market has been quite a whipsaw day. Let's take a look at this through the intraday view of the new micro S&P 500 E-minis traded at the CME, on the CME. There we have it earlier today before the New York Open. We see that those were down uh, about nine-tenths of one percent, now up seven-tenths of one percent. Right now, the E-mini futures up two days in a row, the best two days in about a month. So a rebound from last week's sell-off. What's next? Let's go into the Bloomberg and take a look at this chart using the percentage of stocks above the 200-day moving average. This goes all the way back to 1995. Up top, we have the S&P 500 in relation to that 200-day moving average. On bottom, we have that percentage. We see when the S&P 500 is doing well, we have lots of stocks above that 200-day moving average, more than 70%. And right now, we see that last year, we had been above 70%, very strong internals and breadth there. And then on the fourth quarter sell-off, well below uh, going to single digits or right around single digits. On this year's big rally, back up uh, towards 70%. Now we're dipping back down. And it looks like with a series of lower highs that maybe fewer stocks are going to stay above that 200-day moving average. That would probably be a bullish, a bearish, excuse me, signal, perhaps of a near-term pullback at least to talk more about this. Let's bring in Joe Perry of Forex Analytics. Thanks so much for joining us. Thanks. And what do you think of that chart? Do you think that that suggests that there could be a little more downside, at least in the near term? I do. You know, it's all about the trade wars, number one. If uh, if things are settled, great, stocks go up. If, if things... Uh, if, if things are the same as they are now, the president kicks can down the road and things will be volatile in here. And if nothing goes through, then stocks continue to fall and then the Fed will be forced to cut and then they'll go higher from there. So in the short term, yeah, I do think lower. Well, speaking of that going mm-hmm. lower potentially and the volatility, let's bring in your chart and your trade because you're talking about going lower and then buying weakness. Talk to us about this chart, which you first presented last October. Yeah, last October we had uh, this ascending wedge right here and uh, we broke out of it. We were looking for a move lower. At the time, that was all-time highs. And a retracement of an ascending wedge typically retraces the whole thing, which exactly uh, we eventually did um, go back and retrace it down to the low there around 2350. Even we then hung- some. Yeah, and then some. We hung around, uh, the- we-, we stopped around the 200-day moving average right in here. Uh, and then we had this rise uh, up about 25%. And again, in here, stopped around the 200-day moving average right in here uh, and ascended higher. And once again, we put in an ascending wedge. Just as we did back here, we had one up here, suggesting that we were going to break lower from there. Uh, So we moved down to there. And the difference between uh, where we are right now and the break back here is the one back here in October was a straight line move lower. Uh, The one we have now is kind of a gradually moving lower, which means there are buyers there willing to step in and bring it up a little. And then the sellers come back in. Here, there were no buyers. So that suggests to me that this is going to be a a slower move down, not as strong as this one, and that uh, we, we may come back down to the beginning of the wedge right here, the ascending wedge, and that's where I'd be looking to buy, right around 2700 Okay, so uh, we don't actually have enough time for me to challenge you on your ascending <laughs> wedge there, and the fact that it no, might be a little okay. bit deeper than what you're talking about, <laughs> but you would be buying weakness for 3050. Let's now talk yes. about why you like futures, because you've traded mm-hmm. futures for years and years and years, and so sure. here's some reasons that you like the e-mini futures, and also those new micro e-minis. Yeah, well, uh, the E-minis, uh, exactly. They're twelve fifty a tick versus fifty dollars a tick for the big S and P's, um, and and also it, you know you want to buy these because you don't have to buy every single stock in the basket. Uh, you can just buy a, a future S and P five hundred futures contract. There's also a lot of liquidity. Average liquidity in the E-minis is somewhere around a million. And the new micro E-minis is uh, great because uh, it's one tenth the size of a uh, regular E-mini. So uh, instead of it costing twelve fifty a tick or fifty dollars a handle, it's only dollar twenty. Five a tick. So if retail traders at home want to try to get in this, then they could get in there and they could scale in as they're mo- as it's moving lower and put on a position that way. Great stuff, Joe Perry of Forex Analytics. Thank you for joining us for Thank Charting you. Futures.